Right. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're so grateful at St. Peter that you are able to get on. God has been good to all of us. Amen. He has kept us from Sunday to Wednesday, uh, watched over us on Monday, protected us on Tuesday, and still blessing us on Wednesday. And we're so grateful that uh, we serve a God like that. Amen. Amen. Um, I hope everybody have had a great week. Um, this week has been a little um, slow um, after the, the memorial uh, holiday here at work. So I'm, I've been taking a breather um, and thanking God for it. Um, I hope your families are well. Um, let us continue to pray for our members that um, are sick and shut in, those that may be uh, bereaving, um, during this time, let's keep them lifted up um, in prayer. I'm going to open us up with prayer, and then we will uh, pick back up in uh, Acts, um, I believe it's 20. But let us pray, and then uh, I see uh, Brother Smith's on uh, iPhone. That's a little different. <laughs> but it's all good. Eternal God, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for um, this afternoon. Thank you for this Wednesday. Thanking us for this fellowship. Thanking you, Father, for the fellowship that you've allowed us um, to have together. Father, we ask as we go through this um, uh, Bible study that you would open our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Help us to understand your word together, Father. Lord, help us not only to understand it, but to apply it um, to our daily walk. Father, bless the teacher um, tonight, Father. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you would bless each and every, uh, not only the uh, members, but even our extended uh, family, Father. We ask that you would continue to uh, protect them and watch over the uh, children, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would keep them uh, covered in your blood during this summer while they're out for school, Father, and those that may be going, uh, keep them safe going to and for, Lord. We lift up our seniors to you this evening, Father, that you would continue uh, to keep them uh, in perfect peace and their minds stayed on you, Father. Father, we ask that you would uh, be with us in this study, Lord. Help us to do things decent and in order and that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We ask these things in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. All right, amen. we'll turn it over to our brother Smith. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Can everyone hear me one more time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I'm having internet problems here. Uh, yeah, me too. Technology, technology is great when it's working, but when it ain't, it ain't. That's right. But um, that's right. We are in chapter number 20, uh, somewhere around verse number 25. So if all of you all would turn there, Acts chapter 20, verse number 25. As you're turning, I want to remind you of verse um, X 19 and 21. You don't have to turn there unless you just want to. Uh, but Paul said when these Paul when Paul when these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit. Number one, he purposed in the spirit that when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, that he uh, should go to Jerusalem and then saying, after I have been to Jerusalem, I must also see Rome. So Paul was being led by the spirit to go to Jerusalem and then later on to go to Rome. Now in verse number 25, if you guys remember from last week, uh, the verse reads, and indeed, now I know that uh, you all, all among you, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. In other words, Paul was telling them that this was the last time that they were going to see him. And uh, this bothered them greatly. Uh, it kind of stressed them out just a little that uh, he was not going to see them anymore. Number one, they loved him. Okay. Number two, 
they had kind of got used to him being around every now and then. So they were a little upset about it. Um, look at verse 26 and 27. Therefore, this is Paul saying, therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. What is Paul saying there? Anybody? I can't see you, so you all just have to uh, come on and talk. So anybody unmute and tell me what Paul is talking about there. Well, he's, I think he's talking about that he has preached Jesus to uh, them and that everything that he was told by is through the Holy Spirit, uh, he has told them and he's told them the truth and he let, left nothing out about the works of Jesus. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, Sister Rosemary, that is so right. Paul had preached the word the way uh, it was given to him to preach. And it was up to those who uh, some rejected it, you know, because, you know, we all have choice. But mm -hmm. uh, for those who accepted it, they received who those who received it, received the gospel, the undisputed, the truth, the word. Of God, very good. Hey, Brother Smith, can, oh, can I say something? Yes, sir. Before you move on? Yes, sir. You know, I, you know, I, and I kind of often wonder because when Paul, you know, when he tell Timothy, um, you know, be instant in season, out of season, you know, he's telling them, you know, just preach the word, tell it like it is. If they don't want to hear it, still preach it. When they preach it, when they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it. And, you know, that's the same thing for us today. I mean, even today, I mean, I don't care how long some people been in church, they still uh, don't want to hear some things that the pastor has to say or the preacher has to say. Um, because, you know, sometimes it cut them, you know, um, it cut them, you know, deep down within. And there's some people just don't want to stop doing what they know they don't supposed to be doing. <laughs> You know, and, and they don't want to hear it. You know, we, we uh, some we want to, you know, pick and choose uh, what we want to hear and what we don't want to hear. But you know, Paul was telling them, um, "Look, I preached. I've done what um, I was told to do by Jesus. I've done it. And if you, it's up to you now whether you want to mm -hmm. uh, obey and and um, and follow it. Uh, we mm -hmm. can't make them. You know, a lot of times, you know, we want our children." Um, to have the best and be the best and do the best. And we do what we can to try and, and tell them, but they still have, you know, their own mind. They still have their own, um, you know, their own thoughts. And the only thing we can do is, is preach to them, um, but we can't make them do what, you know, need to be done. It, uh, uh, you know, everybody um, has to make it up in their own mind. That's why he said, you know, in those days, we, we got to stand alone and um you know our mama can't stand up for us daddy can't sisters mm -hmm. they can't stand up in the judgment to say you know lord you know he knew better yes you can't do that now i mean right. you know, it's it's a um we all have our own um we, you know we have to stand out for our own salvation mm -hmm. and and salvation is free but we just gotta want to do it so um, that's my my two cents. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to come in on that? I thought all of y'all would be saying something on that because because that goes to us as well. You know, um, sometimes we, you know, we say that the Lord told us to do something or say something, but if what you're feeling like the Lord told you to do or say doesn't match with the gospel with the with what jesus was preaching and something's wrong there somewhere so we have to be careful sometimes and what we're telling people because we can allow ourselves our own uh, selfish feelings about a thing or you know uh sometimes the way we feel is not the 
you know, the way it's supposed to go. So, you know, we have to be careful about what we are saying because the devil can speak to you too, right? Amen. Right. 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 So right. Uh, we have to be careful with what we're doing. Can I get some um, somebody to volunteer to read for me a few verses? Yes. Remember, I, who is that? Robin. Hey, Sister Robin. Uh, hey. Would you read verse 28 for me? Okay, sure will. Okay. Okay, it says, keep watch over yourselves. Keep watch over all the believers. The Holy Spirit has made you leaders over them. Be shepherds of God's church. He bought it with his own blood. Okay, now this verse right here applies to all, number one, all pastors. I'm not going to say preachers, okay? I'm going to uh -huh. say all pastors and all leaders in the church to me, okay? Paul said, take heed for yourselves, and mine says, for yourselves and all the flock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, take heed right. means that's a warning to be careful, right? Right. 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 So be careful for yourselves and the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you oversee. In other words, you are shepherding the flock. And so you need to watch out not only for the flock now, but you got to watch out for you too. Right. Amen. 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 Now, what does it mean to shepherd the church? Or to shepherd, yeah, man says to shepherd the church of God. What is to shepherd it? What does that mean? To lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how should, how yeah. should a, let's, let's go with a pastor right now and I'll come back to the other in a minute because, you know, we had, we had to point the finger at the, at the other person first. So we're going to point at Reverend Freeman first, okay? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, should a, how should a pastor shepherd the church of God, the flock? How should he do that? Through, uh, through um, you know, ministering the word of, of God. Mm -hmm. Okay guiding them to the best of his ability in the way God would have him to, you know, guide us. Uh, and even when, well, to me, to shepherd means if you see one straying, mm -hmm. do the best you can to pull them back and, you know, to the flock. Okay. Uh, and it's just different. It's, it's different ministries that can meet the needs of, 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 uh, of a flock. Okay. Okay. They're good. They're good. Anybody else? Well, and, and the pastor should lead under the anointing and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That way, then you avoid what you said earlier about getting in self. Because see, we flesh, so we have to be careful. That what he mean by he'll say, you know, look out for yourself too. Now that means right. make sure you're right. Right. That's right. Okay. That's right. You you know so he should. At all times, lean not to your own understanding. Yes. But always acknowledge the Lord in everything that you do. And that's how pastors should lead. So that you don't make the decision that you might think is right. But mm. that the Lord leads you at all times as you lead the flock. As like I said, you know, I follow him as he follows Jesus. But right. if I think you follow something else, oh, we're gonna have a problem here. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Uh, Somebody else. What, I, about what I was gonna say um is that it's so it's about um practicing what you preach. You can't be up there telling us, you know, hey, do this, do that, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then he running around doing something else, and <laughs> you know, the, the the plot is seeing that. And they're like, okay, you know what? Uh, he might be saying uh, one thing, but he's sure doing another thing. And so <laughs> um, the flock might think, hey, you know what? Well, if you can get away with it, I'm going to get away with it too. 
Very good, very good. Right. So, you know, there used to be that saying, do what I say and not what I do. <laughs> All right. Hey, bro, bro let Smith, let me let me add yes, to that. Um, um, okay. Especially um, what both uh, Sister Bishop as well as um, Sister Patton was saying, you know, Paul said, you know, first, Paul is talking to the leaders. He, he say, OK, one. You know, in order to be a leader, you got to be able to follow. You got to follow Jesus. You got to follow God. Um, Paul, he says to the leaders, look after yourself first. <laughs> yeah. If you ain't taking care of yourself first, if the leader, and, and he's speaking to leaders as well as pastors, leaders within the church. So here's the thing. The pastor um, has to be right. The right. leaders also underneath right. the pastor have to look after themselves yes. in a spiritual way. We have to look out after ourselves in a spiritual way, um, live good lives in a spiritual way. What, what, what I mean by living good lives, not uh, you have to be rich, not you have that whole lot. Living good lives meaning, hey, follow the example that God has set. Trust and obey God. And then, then, not only the pastor could shepherd and lead, but also the leaders of various ministries. Ministries mm. can lead once they, uh, and, and they're able to look after the church. So, mm. you know, Paul is saying, you know, be like shepherds. Jesus said in John 10, 11, I'm the good shepherd. Mm. And we're like his sheep. So the leaders, you know, every leader, Every leader over every ministry in the church is a helper of God. It's a helper of Jesus. And, um, and that's what he said. We first we look after ourselves. Then we look after others. If we're not looking after ourselves first and making sure that we're subjecting ourselves and lining up with the word of God, lining up in obedience, then we can't follow what Paul is saying here. In uh, in Acts, mm. and, and, hey. and you know that the, the AME Zion Church, um, uh, you know, sort of regulates our leaders' behaviors. That's why you have the passing of the characters of all of your officers in your church in the quarterly conference. The pastor, the pastor, and the members attending there at that quarterly conference have to pass the characters of those of the leaders, not just the pastor, the trustees. The stewards, all the officers of the church. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nina, for that. Y'all got ahead of me, but I I appreciate it because that's where I was headed. That um, even though we are not the pastor, if you're a leader over any organization, any ministry, uh, you have to follow with that same zeal. One thing you all did not say what I was listening for is you got to love the pastor has to love everybody. So Nina, uh, you you are the chairman of trustee board. You got to love all the trustees. Uh, you got to love them in a way where you got to love everybody. But you know what I'm saying? In that particular board situation that you're over, even though some of them are hard-headed, right? But you still have to be able to nurture. Like you say, it, to me, I feel mm -hmm. like it's my job, even though most of them are older than I am. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the, the still there's certain knowledge and know how that God has blessed me with that I can share with them to help nurture them along in their spiritual growth, you know, and personal right. growth. You know, right. it doesn't matter who's the oldest, you know, it's, it's because, you know, like I said, it, before every meeting, every, in almost everything I do, when I go to do it, I say, lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness make mm -hmm. thy way plain before my face right thy way not my way right and you know nina can be stubborn but i said lord you make it plain <laughs> so i can't miss it amen and look at the last part of that of that verse number 28 where it says uh to shepherd the church of god which he purchased with his own blood and we know who, who that was that purchased the church with his own blood, right? Who is that? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, right. Okay. So um, 
we 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 owe Jesus that much. All right. Now, here's another thing in verse number 29. Let's look at 29, Sister uh, Robin. Read uh -huh. that one. Okay. I know that after I leave, our wolves will come in among you. They won't spare any of the sheep. Let me say it again, Ben. Yes, read 29 again for him. I got interrupted. I know that after I leave, wild wolves will come in among you. They won't spare any of the sheep. Okay. All right. So you got to be careful. You got to also be on your guard. Paul said, as soon as I leave you. Savage wolves are going to come in am among you. So those, so pastors got to look for stuff that's coming in from the outside. Because mm -mm, he said here in 30, some of your okay, own yeah, men yeah. Hold up, Nina, you're getting a, Hey, Nina, hold up. You're getting ahead of me, so hold on. Oh, well, come on, boy. It's almost 7 o'clock. Come on. <laughs> hold your Nina horses a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, this, look, I said, now, this year is this year is real good up in him. Yeah. <laughs> 20, Twenty-five to thirty-one is good up in him. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So a pastor's got to look out for things that come in from the outside. And the reason I put emphasis on this was uh, some years ago, I was getting trying to get a certain uh, preacher to come to St. Peter to preach. And of course, you know, anytime you're going to do something like that, uh, I'm not the pastor. So I need to go to the pastor, number one, to get permission. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes pastors know things that me as a lay person, I don't know. And Reverend Cameron rejected the person that I was going to um, invite. And he also gave me the reason why, which I won't give to you, but uh, he it was something that was going on that he didn't feel that should be brought into St. Peter Amy Zion Church. And so that's why I say a pastor has to be on guard for things that are coming in from the outside. We too have to be on guard that we are not um persuaded from things from the outside mm -hmm. that are coming in okay now um, go ahead you know um if you really listen at what paul is saying here mm -hmm. paul said look now i've been preaching i've been with you guys the key here is, he said, I've been preaching. I've been preaching the word of God. And that's mm -hmm. the key. That's really the key here. He's been preaching the word of God. He's done what God has uh, told him to do. So he said, if you know, if anybody don't believe, it ain't on, it's not on him. Because he, he preached the word, which is really a key something in here. Um, right. You know. We're, we should be really listening to the word uh, of God, you know, um, through whoever speaks through the Holy Spirit, because that's the key, you know. Okay. Uh, and then as th this whole this whole act, you know, was was uh, birthed out of the, you know, the Holy Spirit and all of this, I, you know, I was just listening at what Paul was saying. He put emphasis on the fact of how he had been preaching to them. And, you know, that's just like when, I'm, when someone is preaching to us, you know, because I was sharing with somebody the other day and I said, if these ministers been preaching to us all these years mm -hmm. and it's just one somebody that know how to teach the words, some wrong, somewhere. <laughs> Right. I, I'm not saying it's on the, the preacher's part, but I'm just saying because we have a responsibility as well. We have a responsibility to take that word 
and, and apply that word as well. A minister is not just up there preaching just so we can get a hype. No, we well, have to do something with what he's given us. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Bro Amen. Smith, let me let me let me add to uh, go ahead. Uh, Robert was hitting on the head, but when you talk to when we looking at that verse, you know Paul also he he's getting to the point where he's warning about false teaching. Mm -hmm. be, you know, be careful about yeah, we listening to the word, but that's going to be somebody that's going to come. They're going to show up right. at your church that may not teach the gospel. They will right. teach what they want to teach, and one of the things that I did uh, with our preachers is starting out when they started preaching, I wanted to see their sermons mm. before they preached it to make sure they preached in the gospel. <laughs> amen. And, uh, amen. Uh, amen. Because, you know, that is some of the things that we have to watch for because we could, um, you let anybody don't know what they, yeah, we asking the Holy Spirit to, um, to, you know, speak through them, but do we know that they ask the Holy Spirit to give them that sermon and, and, and write it? So we want to make sure that they're not coming in with false teaching mm. and false preaching because, you know, when people and certain people, when they don't know the scripture for themselves, yeah. they are follow false mm. teaching. Mm. So, you know, Paul is getting there when he, he's, he's saying, you know, he warned about the false teaching that people were like wild animals mm -hmm. you know he was thinking about them and he was saying they did not preach real gospel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so those are some of the things that and and robin was saying hey you have to know the word in order for you to know if somebody coming and preaching right you got to know it for yourself amen that means you have to study he didn't say preacher study he didn't say just leader study. He says study to everybody to show thyself approved. Amen. Right and divine the word of truth. That way, if somebody can step to you, I remember when I, I went to McCall. I'm going to be quiet, Benny. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I used to teach a Bible study at, at McCall. And, and I mean, it was like a Sunday. They, they hadn't had Bible study for so long. So um, when I come, they, they was enjoying They wanted it. And one of the things they would say to me is the things that were being taught from the scripture, when they would go and hear somebody preach, they would hear the teaching that they were taught in Bible study mm. to know that it was in agreement. <laughs> the gospel was being taught and it was being preached. But if it didn't sound right, <laughs> if it didn't line up, they pointed that out too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. All right, Robin, read verse 30, and let's get to what Nina was about to hit on there. This is oh. kind of, if you want to call it a little worse, <laughs> number 30. Okay. Even men from your own people will rise up and twist the truth. They want to get the believers to follow them. Wow. So not only do we have to worry about the outside, right, Nina? We got to worry about the inside, about people coming in, trying to split up the church from the inside. Mm -hmm. So false teachers are going to rise up among you to draw them after themselves. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, I ain't going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they'll do that right in your church. When yes. you know anything, when you know anything, you sitting you sitting up there because you ain't paying attention because you ain't thinking that 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 got good brother and sister and whatever would do that. And when you know anything, you got a big divide in your church. Yes. That I've, been, I've been in the church where that has happened. Yep. I was about to say that's how, how then he broke off and got his own church and took half of the members with him and the other half stayed, you know. Amen. You took the words out of my mouth. That's how you got uh, first St. Peter Amy Zion Church and then you get second St. Peter Amy Zion Church. Mm. From people splitting off because someone came in to preach something different. 
So you got to be careful. Uh, you got to watch out as well as pray. Okay, Sister Robin, 31. So be on your, your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning you. Night and day, I warned each of you with tears. Mm. He was very passionate. Very passionate. Keep going, 32. Now I trust God to take care of you. I commit you to the message about his grace. It can build you up. Then you will share in what God's, God plans to give all his people. Okay, uh, listen to my 32, verse number 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance mm -hmm. among all those who are sanctified. What does that mean? What, what is Robin's verse? What, is, what does all that mean? What is Paul saying there? Anybody? He, he's encouraging them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's letting them know, look, I, I'm trusting God to take care of you from this point, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, it's kind of like he's, he's uh, you know, giving them to God now, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, and, and he's just no set apart. Yes. Yes. Hey, okay. ben, can I read? Can I read the thirty-two from mine? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It says, "I am entrusting you to God and to His message that tells how kind He is. Mm. That message can help you grow and can give you the inheritance that is shared by all of God's." Holy people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Holy. Right. You set apart holy so he said, I, I, I've showed you how to reap the benefits of the harvest. I've mm -hmm. told you for years. Now I just have to trust that you're going to carry that in your heart, you know, and, and follow God's word so mm -hmm. that you can, so that you can live abundantly, so that you can have life. Um, yes, you know it, this. This reminds me of when when Jesus got ready to leave. Uh, you know how he prepared um, his disciples. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hearing the word preparation and how mm -hmm. important it is. You know, as leaders, to you know prepare people in such a way. You know, uh, but I'm just hearing that. Yes, and let me let me add my two cents. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, you know, Paul, when, when you, when, um, and I like the way um, Sister Patton Balba read, but Paul basically, no, he was going away. He couldn't look after him any longer. But Paul knew that God could take care of him. We know that God can take care of us. We know even uh, when you so spiritual minded and you so connected with God, you know, even if you close your eyes today, that God will take care of your family that that's, that's still living. Paul knew that he knew that God can look after them. So he said, I'm going to put you in God's care. They got the gospel. That's all they need. That's all we need. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the word of God. But we, we got to believe it, though, and follow it. And following. Amen. Yeah. And then and then too, you know, um, and good good afternoon. I apologize for being late, y'all. But uh, when I think about when he's saying give you an inheritance mm. among all those who are sanctified, you know, I just think about, you know, we are in the times of, you know, they have access to the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, whereas they didn't have access to that before. And so as a part of, to me, the sanctification and the, the inheritance, like we, we, you know, Jesus said, you know, we're going to do greater works than he did. Mm. And so, you know, when I think about that inheritance, a part, you know, part of it, it ain't got nothing to do with money or wealth or anything like that. I just think of it and, you know, 
like I now have access to the throne, directly to the throne as a part of me being in the sanctified family now. You know, that mm-hmm. inheritance that I have, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the greater one living on the inside of me now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister. Yes. Thank you, Minister Faye. Anybody else? Okay. So Paul has already warned them there is going to be trouble ahead, but trust in God. Mm-hmm. The same thing Jesus was telling them. Um, You know, I'm, I'm going to leave y'all now, but I'm going to send the promise. Now, I want you to stay in Jerusalem until the promise comes. Right. And then when the promise comes, you're going to receive power and you can do these things. But I'm leaving you. I got to go. I'm out of here. So Paul is basically saying the same thing. Look at verse 34. Um, I mean, 33, Sister Robin. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I haven't longed for anyone silver or gold or clothing. Okay. Now, my book says coveted, which is the same thing that yours said I hadn't longed for. I haven't desired. Mm-hmm. I never why wanted. Would he, yeah. Why would he say that? Well, the next verse answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, I, I think that answer is part of it, but you know, sometimes we can get off track. Okay. For example, um, I, I like the way Robin sings, so I'm in the choir. So I don't wanna sing like you, I wanna sing as you do, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and when I don't, when I can't, or when something comes up and I feel like, you know, it can get me off track. In other words, uh, I, I forget why I'm here at choir yeah. rehearsal. Yeah. See, I'm at choir rehearsal to sing praises to the Lord, not to get me a spot on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? So I don't, to covet that, and, and mine says to covet, you know, that's that's one of those uh, Ten Commandments. Yes. You know so, what I'm saying? Thou should not covet. You know, yeah. you don't need what someone else has. You know, uh, yeah. I heard it said in one of the sermons on Sunday that what the Lord has for you is yours. And you're going to get mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. So I don't need to desire what someone else has. So Paul said, I didn't cover anyone's silver or gold. And then one more for me, Robin, and then I'm going to get somebody else to read. Third, four. Okay. You yourselves know that I have used my own hands to meet my needs. I have also met the needs of my c- components. Com- companions. Uh, yeah, companions. I'm sorry. Okay. I have also met the needs of my companions. Okay. All right. Uh, any any uh, discussion there? It's, it's pretty much just saying like what you was trying to uh, say earlier. If Paul, it wasn't it wasn't all about having to have this and uh, you know having to have that from others. He was just being obedient. Uh, of the fact that God had called him. Um, So it wasn't about, you know, uh, desiring somebody else's this and somebody else's that, because he was well able to to take care of himself. Uh, So I got a question for Reverend Freeman. You still there? Reverend Freeman. Well, Benny, I have a comment. Go ahead. And and two, I think he didn't want uh, his believers or other people saying that he came just for the money or just yeah. for what he could get. Because wasn't he a tent maker, so he earned his own keep? Right. 
Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. And then, you yeah. know, and then, you know, in 34, you know, he's saying, not only have I, you know, worked and, you know, for my own provision, mm-hmm. but, right. you know, I've also helped provide for, you know, my yeah. companions mm-hmm. as well. And I just think about that song, um, uh, everything attached to me wins. You know, um, because you know, you know, I'm not just being a blessing to myself, but I'm being a blessing to those that that surround mm-hmm. me as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, bro Smith, I'm off mute, and that's that's uh very very on point, Sister Stewart. Smith had a question for me. I, I was gonna try and answer. No, you muted that, Smith. Can't hear you, Dr. Smith. Mm-hmm. We can't hear you. you can there you hear you. me now? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want us to get it twisted. Uh, Paul did believe in the church supporting the ministry. Because right. if we if we think back. When Paul left to go on the, his missionary journey, they gave him funds mm-hmm. from the beginning, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But along the way, he may have needed more help or more mm-hmm. support. And so wherever he could, he worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because and, Paul and, and, said, I'm sorry. And they would, send offer, they would send offerings from other churches. Right. As Go, ahead. Go ahead, Sister Faye. I was just going to ask, wasn't it Paul that, um, that said, you know, when, when you go take nothing with you, mm-hmm. um, because, right. you know, they was going to, de- you know, depend on the, you know, that the, you know, as they went along that, that the provisions would be provided for them by the people. Right. Mm-hmm. No, Pastor, I was going to ask you about when, when you go to, when the, the bishop has sent you to Teeny Weeny AME Zion Church, <laughs> and and you probably ain't gonna get no no salary there. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and and those things happen depending on what the budget is, depending on who's giving. You may not get anything. I mean, <clears throat> you've been there. I've been, you've in, been there. I've been okay. there. <laughs> I've been there where I didn't take have a salary for a long time. But mm. I wasn't there for that either. Right. I was there to preach the God the word, the word of God, and God provided for me always. Mm. When I tell you God has always provided, I'm a living witness. Amen. That I have never ever went without God being uh, having provisions. Mm. And when uh I can testify that it was nobody but God. Mm. I can testify when my grandfather told me, if you take care of your children, God going to take care of you. I'm a testimony Mm. that everywhere I look, money was falling from the sky. Mm. (laughs) Praise the Lord. I can testify to that. And and, uh, he's just he's just that kind of God. But Mm. here's the thing. When it's said in the scripture that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. Mm. That's in his word. And when you trust that he can do it, when you trust that he's going to provide, you got to believe. And now I asked. You have to ask for the things. He know what you need, but he wants you to just step, step out and ask sometimes. Mm. But then God also wants you to give back to what he has given to you. He mm. let me know quick, fast, in a hurry when I wasn't doing right with the contract, okay, you ain't gonna do right. I bless you with it. You're not gonna do right. I'm gonna snatch. You. I'm gonna just, you know, I'm. I'm I need to get your attention. Mm. But he wanted to get my attention the second and third and fourth time after that. Because <laughs> once you learn, uh, you know better. You do better. Yes, right. Amen. Once you know you can't play with God, you don't play with it. Mm-hmm. You Amen. just let it be so. But I, I mean, yeah, we. You know, when we first went to uh, Spring Hill, the budget was $100. But they didn't have that. 
Mm. But what I, I'm not going to stop going to do what God told me to do. When God is providing on, he's making sure that we was covered. He's making sure that our bills, were, he was making sure all those things. But here's the thing. When he say he give the increase, mm -hmm. believe his word. He said, when you faith over a few things, I'll make you rule over many. When you, um, you know, when, when, when he said that he will give the increase in his time and God will do just that. But you got to trust him. I'm telling you. Uh, believers, you got to trust God that he'll do it. Amen. He's able to do what amen. he said he could do. Amen, amen. Uh, the commentary that... That's the next... Brother, Brother Smith. Yes. I, and I heard the point that you were trying to make because sometimes we have... We do have members who don't want to give the pastor anything. Yes. And, and we get hung up on that little part, you know, that we heard what Paul is saying, and then there are some other scriptures too. But just as Sister Faye mentioned, you know, Jesus was the one who said, take nothing for the journey. Mm -hmm. He told he was sending the disciples out wow. to preach, yeah. to heal the sick, sick, and he said, don't take no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, you know. And so the, the church was supposed to, the people were supposed to support the pastor. Amen. And and so we can't get where we don't want to support the pastor saying that they he can work, he got a job. So it, well, so is he supposed to? When does he study and prepare? You know, he it, it's it's difficult to 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 you know you want a preacher who who has the time to be prepared to do the work of of, of Christ mm -hmm. to do kingdom building. So you mm -hmm. expect him to work a forty hour job. And then also to come and come to you, visit you in the hospital. And mm -hmm. I, uh -uh, you got, you need to, you have to support. Smith. That's right. Mm -hmm. have to support. So I see the point that you were trying to make. And Jesus mm -hmm. already told them, don't, don't go nowhere. That means the, the people got to support the ministry. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not just to send to the other churches. That's the support. He said it. Right. It's in Luke 9, mm -hmm. verse, verse 3. Starting at verse one, when the, when Jesus called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all the demons and cure the diseases, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God you and to heal the sick. And he said, "Take nothing for the journey." Like this, I'm on so Smith. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Teacher, Amen. Can, can I add one more comment? Because yeah. Sister Smith was talking about that. You know, one of the when you look at some of these healthy churches, when you look at some of the churches that are thriving. Um, I, I can remember when First United um, invited us, all the preachers from the Tuscaloosa Bessemer District to come have steak dinner with them. And they prepared, they ordered chefs to come to the church and they prepared to cook, you know, for about 20 presses, but only two of us showed up and that was me and, and, and Dr. Steele. So they sent the pastors home, I mean, they sent the chefs home and they took us out to a steak dinner downtown, to a steakhouse. But mm. while I was sitting there talking to the young preacher, they moved him from New Jersey down, from New York down to Tuscaloosa. He was in his 20s, paying him uh, uh, right at 80 some thousand a year. Mm. And I said, what do you do every day? Well, I write sermons, I study, I counsel, I write sermons, I study. He doesn't. Have, he didn't have to work a, a job. So when I say your sermon should be dynamic, <laughs> you know, because you when you can focus on just sitting there and studying the Word of God, it's the same way with the senior pastor down there. When Kent Donovan, you know, when we, you know, we try and say that you know we give the pastor too much or we pay him too much. Let me tell you something. If you take a preacher and you treat them right and you take care of them to where they could take care of you, yes. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm. But so Smith was right. When you try and go work a 40 hour job and do, you know, try and go visit all your sick and, and shut in and be at games and be at the, you know, it takes a toll on, on, mm -hmm. on quite a few. And, and can, they get burned out. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I can truly say, you know, just, you know, as far as um, ministering, you know, one time a month, for me, you know, I know I minister every Sunday, you know, many sermons, 
you know, in the back, which still takes preparation, but, mm-hmm. you know, ministering just a one time a month, I'm like, oh my, you know, <laughs> it, it, it takes a lot, like to, to, you know, because you have to be in a place where you can be quiet and be still and be mm-hmm. able to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Like you, you know, to preach a revelant word to his people and, and you know, what the people need, you got to be able to, to be in a place to hear from God. And, and when you bustling and rustling all day and, 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 you know, and everything going through your mind and you got to do this, that, and up, it's, it, you know, my head is off. Mm-hmm. you know to, to, to pass because you know people may take it lightly but when mm-hmm. you can get a word that's relevant from God that takes spending some time with him and and being able to hear him and mm-hmm. you can't hear him when you are busy mm-hmm. amen mm-hmm. amen I read the uh, commentary and then uh I need somebody else to volunteer commentary said leaders must be concerned about that that they are giving to the flock more than they need to be concerned about what the flock is giving to them. Mm. Mm. Anyway, mm-hmm. all right, uh, let's get uh, somebody else to volunteer. I read. Okay, read, um, where do we stop? 35, uh, just gonna read all the way to the end of the chapter, 35 through 38. Okay. Okay, so um, just to recap from 34, you know that I have worked to support myself and those who were with me. I have given you an example that by working hard like this, we should help the weak. We should remember the words that Lord, the Lord Jesus said, giving gifts is more satisfying than receiving them. I'm trying to do it by giving time. You said what I got you want me to read 36, Ben? Yeah, go ahead and finish. Yes, go ahead. So I'll read to 38. Okay. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with all of them. Everyone cried a lot as they put their arms around Paul and kissed him. The thought of not seeing Paul again hurt them most of all. Then they took Paul to the ship. Okay. All right. So... Uh, Paul gave them some, uh, as my Bible says in 35, uh, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, He said that Paul Paul was an example to show them uh, how they are supposed to be. In other words, uh, the um, strong is supposed to support the weak. Mm. Yes. Those who, by laboring this, that you must support the weak. All right. Um, any comments about these last verses? Notice that they all cried. Mm-hmm. They fell on his neck, they kissed him, and they cried. It's because they were sorrowing from the words that he has said that I won't see you all anymore. Amen. Any comments from anybody? This was good tonight. I wanted us to walk through these last few verses very carefully. You know, it's sometimes you think um, um, a person is going to be with you forever. Mm-hmm. It's like with the apostles. They thought, they didn't think that, you know, Jesus was going to lead them. Remember, they were young guys. They were in their 30s, early 30s. And so, you know, him dying and leaving them was not on their mind. Mm -hmm. And here Paul is, you know, he's been preaching to them. He said, I preached to y'all about three years now. I've been telling y'all this. Now Mm -hmm. it's it's time for you to do. Mm -hmm. It's time, that time has come. So, is there a time in your life when you're going to do? You know, is there a certain number of sermons you got to hear? Um, is, you know, is there a certain point that you have to get yourself to? But 
the you know the time comes for all of us to do we've heard it now it's time to do it amen amen amen, amen. pastor i'm going to turn it over to you we'll pick up in chapter 21 next week all right uh brother smith thank you um for the teaching i just wanted to add that you know paul loved those christians um those Christians, those believers loved him too. And they didn't look at him just as a teacher, but they looked at him as a friend. They looked at him as a brother. And um, that's one of the reasons why they were sad. Um, they knew he was going and would never meet again. I wanted to, um, those of you that can stay on, I know some of you got to get off and go watch um, a few different things, but I, I need uh, five minutes of, of your time. I want to introduce... Um, a uh, better together uh, ministry, um, and I want to do a uh, have a committee for it. But I want to present it tonight, and those that want to sign up to be on the committee, committee, um, I have a, a, a sign up sheet. Um, the Spirit gave me um, as I was meditating on how we could. Um, uh, make it, the church better, some of the things, uh, even from, you know, the preacher, uh, pastor standpoint. Um, so Minister uh, Stewart texted me uh, yesterday or maybe Monday talking about the children, but I had been working on this PowerPoint for about two weeks, just listening to God, um, listening to what he have to say. And if you got just a few minutes, those that can stay on, I know those that need to go can go, but I want to share um, uh, this. And I have to be obedient to um, the spirit, Robin. Let's see what allow me to share. Yeah. All right. Those that may not can see this, Psalm can. Um, Psalm can. <clears throat> but this is a, uh, I want to introduce a Better Together ministry um, for St. Peter. And uh, what this ministry or what this community would do is, is we want to see how we can make our worship service better together. How we can make our auxiliaries better together. Um, Isaiah uh, 1 and 18 says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Um, Though your sins are like, uh, your sins are like, <clears throat> that, uh, your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. When Isaiah says, let us reason together, God is telling Judah to examine the case against them and make the necessary corrections. If they would correct the situation, then they would be forgiven. So we want God to uh, be pleased with what is going on at, at St. Peter. Um, uh, the ministries that we want, and we look in to critique. When I say critique, not badger, uh, not uh, you know, uh, disrespect, um, not talk about um, in a negative way, um, uh, different ministries or those on that ministry. We want to commit it to that to just look and critique um, what's going on uh, within the church, what we can do um, to make it better, make things smoother from the Sunday school to the chosen generation to Bible study, acolytes, worship service, steward board, urship board, greeters ministry, choir, music, media, all of that, all of that and whatever else we can throw in there. So how do we view and accomplish this task? Um, by the word, by the work of God. We critique by looking through the word of God, not your own word, but the word of God. Ephesians 4 and 2 tell us always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, make an allowance for each other's fault because of your love. Ephesians 4, 31, in that same uh, chapter 31 and 32, get rid of all bitterness. What I mean by that is some people, some of us can look at these and we can be bitter about it. Uh, rage and anger, harsh words, slander, 
as well as those type of behaviors. And then 32 says, instead, be kind uh, to each other. How do we do that? Well, when we critique, we got to look at it, okay, as um, kindness, um, tenderhearted, forgiving. When somebody mess up, you don't beat them down. If somebody go the wrong way or go, you, you, you know, you don't talk to them any kind of way. You want to do things in love. Just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Second thing we do is critique by praying for the ministers, not against the ministers. Uh, when, when, when we uh, pray, um, what, 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 when we look at that, you know, prayer is giving our attention to God into a two-way spiritual relationship where we talk to God and also listen to him. It's like a child's conversation with their father. Ephesians 6 and 12 tell us that we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. We are fighting and there is a real and present enemy who is ready to vow even in the church of God. <laughs> so prayer is the most powerful and effective um, you know, weapon that we can have. And I, I'm almost through because I only gave, um, I wanted to look at from three different things. Um, we need the prayer of faith. We need the prayer of agreement. When we look at this on this committee, we need a prayer request, also known as a petition or supplication. We need a prayer of thanksgiving and a prayer of worship if we want to move God, church, in the way that it should go. Philippians 4 and 6 tell us not to be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and is yours. We need a committee that will pray and that will believe that when we make our requests made known to God, God will hear an answer, okay? Um, Colossians 4 and 2. Continue steadfast in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Consistent prayer on how we should please God through the ministry of the church. So uh, encouragement was my last point. Um, 1 Thessalonians Five and eleven. First Thessalonians five and eleven, and I, I put it in there, but didn't put the the scripture. And I come back and read it. But Christian encouragement is a command, but one we find awkward to employ in everyday life. So it doesn't have to be uncomfortable, though. Like any other skill, we get better with practice. So we have to practice. Um, what we're doing. With that in mind, I got five suggestions and I'm not going to um, read through them. I make this presentation available on our, um, uh, uh, through Reva. So one, we turn to the word when we encourage. We turn to the word first. Um, we be specific in it. Be specific, not mean. Uh, we be intentional. Be intentional not stepping over and, and stomping people down in this. Uh, we be selfless. You know, we have to make sure um, we're selfless. And um, <clears throat> we have a choice to be self selfish or selfless in our encouragement. So we can either um, harm by selflessness or silence of our silence and dismiss our practice, or we can heal by selflessness of our fruitful words um, driven by the scripture. I think I got two more slides and I'm done. So uh, be uh, courageous. No, don't just encourage godly things uh, that are already done, but encourage the pursuit of God, the things that are not being done. We often need to uh, godly courage in order to give someone else courage, okay? So um, those are five things we looked at. I believe encouragement should take place alongside any list of spiritual disciplines. And when we encourage someone, we had an opportunity to speak the healing uh, truth into their lives. We do this by the grace through a heart changed by Christ and words drawn from scripture. In this way, we may strive to excel 
in building up the church, um, 1 Corinthians 4 and 12. So I want to, um, if any of body that's interested in getting on this committee, um, will be a sign up sheet in the annex building on Sunday. Um, I want to meet on the first and third Wednesdays right after Bible study and let us reason together in order to be um, better together. So life is better when we're together. So that is just a um, snapshot of what we're trying to do um, and enhance uh, and build up God's kingdom. So um, there's some, some um, ministries that we need to uh, improve several. And the only way we can improve them is we have to um, not only reason together, but come together, look at what um, we can do to make it better and let's work on it. So any, any questions, any, any thoughts? Um, Pastor, I think, um, you know, this, you, you had to, you um, sort of went through this quickly and mm -hmm. I know why I'm trying to preserve time, but I certainly, I, I feel like this topic warrants more time. And so okay. that you more explanation of how this committee will operate. Maybe um, next Wednesday in, uh, in the place of our regular chapter 21, you this bring this back. And okay. then and then, you know, and 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 let us make sure we announce uh, you know that you're sharing this plan for the mm -hmm. formal committee. But I think it, it warrants more time and discussion than 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 you know what you were able to give it tonight. Okay. So uh, next next Wednesday we'll we'll go deeper into it. I mean, you know what I'm saying I know you said yeah. you were gonna make you know Reba to put it send it to us probably by email by attachment, but that's still gonna be us leaning to you know us taking our own interpretation. I'm I'm I would like to hear your vision for this committee and and for moving us you know forward in a more effective, efficient manner. So that's okay. why I think it deserves more. It needs to. You, you deserve more time to present this. All right, let's do it next Wednesday. Okay. Is that, is what's next Wednesday? First, that's first Wednesday. Isn't it? Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Where we, yeah. That's right. We do it. Thank you. I, I, if I, I'm, I'm all, I'm all ears. I'm all in. I just want us to uh, be able to, um, and you're right, you, it, it warrants more time. So um, let's do it. Alrighty. All right. Let's take prayer requests. Thank you, Sister Pat. Uh, Sister Oral Long Spratlin. Sister Orly, we just call her Orly. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Freeman, this is uh, Sister Jackie. I just received a call from Mrs. Cox. Brother Cox had surgery today, and he's in the hospital in Demopolis. In Demopolis. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Reverend Freeman, I'm asking for prayers for my nephew, Joseph. Um, he had an eye infection and had to end up having like a procedure the other day at Children's Hospital. Um, but okay. just pray for healing for my nephew, Joseph. Thank All you. Right. Pastor Freeman, I'm asking for prayer for Dot Shiloh. It's the niece of my father. And um, she's been placed under hospice care with cancer. All right. Anybody else? Uh, Pastor, I'm uh, asking for prayer for my daughter, Ashley. Okay. Also, Pastor Freeman, lift up Mike Sullivan. He's a bad diabetic. Okay. All right, before we pray, let me thank every auxiliary, every board, every person, every member of St. Peter for um, such an outstanding homecoming. Um, still much work to do, but 
um, that day, uh, Sunday was a great day. Thank you for all your hard work, um, your time, your talents, your financial support. Um, we haven't met our goal yet for those that may um, still <clears throat> want to give or can, um, please do so. We, um, we have some things we gotta do at the church. Um, so we're grateful for what you're doing, but we, we're um, asking if you can do any, any more, um, please do so. Let us pray. Father God, we come in the master's name of Jesus, thanking you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thanking you for this Bible study. Uh, thank you for the teacher, Father, that has taught and all of uh, the members who have shared, the ministers and uh, who have shared in uh, this Bible study, who have read, and uh, even gave their testimonies and their uh, shared uh, stories that will help us, Lord, in our uh, daily walk. We thank you for your word and being so quick and powerful, being so rich. Um, it's like a lamp um, to our feet and a light unto our pathway, Lord, that will not return to you, Lord, but will carry out the things that it was called to do. Father, we come to you because we love you so much. Uh, you love us even more, but Father, you have done uh, more than what we deserve, Father. And we're so grateful, Father. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us uh, when we were thought we didn't even forgive ourselves for loving us when we didn't love ourselves, Lord, for talking to us and just nurturing us, Father, even when nobody else wanted to talk to us, Father, for providing for us, Father, when we couldn't provide for ourselves, Lord, for protecting us, Father, from danger seen and unseen and from those, Lord, that we don't even know that's, uh, that, that's apt to get us, Father, but you blocked them anyway, Father, and we're so grateful. But then we're so mostly important thanking you for your son, Jesus, who you sent to die for us, Father, to be the example of how we should live, Father. Father, we come right now because you say we should always pray, Father, and we're praying in Jesus' name, Father. You said that we can just come to you, Father, and just lay it at your feet. And Father, we come in right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, praying for Sister Orr Lee, Father, praying for strength, Father, praying, Lord, that you would give her uh, her ability back, Father, praying that you would give her, Lord, a little more encouragement, Father, than she had on yesterday, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would give her a little more healing, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that wherever she is, if she's still there, Father, in the uh, rehab, Father, that you will, Lord, give her the rehabilitation that she needs, Father, to just get up and walk on out of there, Father. We pray that you would continue to bless her and bless her children in the name of Jesus, those that even caring for her, Father. Touch in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Brother Cox, Father. We've heard he has yeah. surgery. Father, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will go on down to Demopolis, Father, and that it will saturate the room that he's in, Father. We pray, Lord, and thank you for a successful surgery, Father. But we pray, Lord, for a speedy recovery, Father. We pray, Lord, that every uh, open womb that was open, Father, that you would close it, Father. We pray for every pain that he might have that you would remove it, Father. We pray if there's any stitches, Father, that you would heal him, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would just take care of him, Father. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the number of years you've had, Father, We uh, that lets us know, Father, if you take care of Brother Cox, you will take care of us, Father. Touch his wife in the name of Jesus, Lord. Give her strength, Father, his children in the name of Jesus. Give them uh, strength, Father. Lord, and let them not worry, Father, but let them know that you are able to take care of them, Father. We lift up Joseph, Father. We heard about the eye infection, Father. We pray, Lord, for healing in that eye. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, Lord, for uh, a miracle, Father, that you will allow him to see even better, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, fix him in the name of Jesus, that you would touch him from head to toe, Father, whatever he need, Father, whatever healing he need, uh, give it to him. Take care of him, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Doc uh, Shallow to him right now, Father, that as at the ho in hospice, Father, we pray, Lord, for uh, this, this strength, Father. We pray, Lord, for the ease of the pain, Father. We know that 
uh, sometimes when they go in hospice, Father, that uh, people want to give up on them, Father. But you, Lord, it ain't over until you say it's over, Amen. Father. You, you yeah. have the last word, Father. And we thank you, Father, for having the last word, Father. We thank you, Father, for having all power, Father. We've seen people declared dead, Father, by the doctor, Lord. But you said, get up and just keep on walking, Father. They declared them dead, but you made them live, Father. And they allowed to walk out of those rooms. So we're grateful, Father. Father, we're praying right now for the family in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Ashley uh, to you right now, Father. Whatever she need, Father, you be the provider, Father. Whatever you see, Father, you touch, Father. Whatever healing she may need, you heal, Father. Whatever encouragement she may need, you encourage her, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will lead in God and let her father not to worry, Father. Uh, let him know that she's in your hand, Father. And Anything that get in your hand, Father, you're able to take it and shape it and mold it, Father, in the right direction that it need to be, Father. And we pray, Lord, that mama don't worry, Father, that, that you got her, Father. And Lord, let them see the results that you got all power, Father. And when you speak things, Father, things will be done, Father. We lift up Mike uh, Sullivan to you, Father. We've heard uh, the report, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would touch, Lord, that you would strengthen, Father, that you would heal, Father. We pray right now, Lord, that you would continue to just do what you're going to do, Father, and be the God with all power, Father. We pray that you do what you're going to do, Father, and be the God that know all, Father, that you do what you're going to do, Father, and be the God that can do anything abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Father, we claim right now victory for everyone we prayed for tonight, Father, and we consider it done. Thank we you. ask these things in the master's name of Jesus, who are called to Christ. And then, Father, we lift up St. Peter to you. Every member, Father, we lift them up to you. Father, we lift them up right now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord, for whatever we need at the church, Father, that you would give it to us. Father, you said we have not because we ask not. Father, you even seen our shortfalls on what we need, Father. But you said that we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, you would give it to us, Lord. Bless every auxiliary, Father. Bless Every person, every chairperson in there, bless every member, Father, with what they need, Father, not what they want, but what they need, Father. Then we pray, Lord, that you would move this church in the way that you go. Father, we even lifted up this better together ministry to you, Father, that it will come together, Father, and it will do wonders for the church, Father. Anyone that wants to step out on that committee, that you would bless them, Father, with the mindset, Father, to serve you and you only, Father. We ask these things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. You all have a great night. Thank you all for being in. May God bless all of you. God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.